I started in, when I finished high school. Uh, I was uh, very inspired to see Mr. Takac. Yeah, Takac is a local painter, he's an impressionist. And he showed me this amazing part of art that you can paint in the streets, do uh, have life contact with art and with life through painting in the street and painting real life as it is. Um, and then I got all sorts of inspirations from many, many, many artists. And basically, I started in 12th grade. My father also painted a little as an amateur, and I kind of took the passion from him. I made the cityscapes, but uh, I also do them now. I mean, I, it's something that it has to be about contact with uh, the first impulse that you get from the light that you see that falls on the buildings. It's not about the buildings themselves, it's about the light. And you have to catch the light and paint really fast. Like in two hours or an hour and a half, you have to catch the, that spark of light. Of course, you can also take a photo, photo and paint it in your workshop, but it's not the same thing. There's a different painting that you do in your workshop and you're already relaxed and uh, calm. And there's different tension to the painting. It's more lively when you paint it in the street. Abstract art is something that is very hard. You have to get there and it's a long, long journey. You can't just paint abstract overnight after you finish college. Oh my god, I'm an abstract painter. I don't, I don't think that's really possible. Like Mondrian, they had, he had the tree and the tree became the, <laughs> the squares, but he had the tree at first. It was the tree. I have a lot of portraits, yes, and I'm interested in, in catching the psychologians, but maybe, maybe the spirituality of what the eyes have to tell about the person, about the, the face. When somebody looks at a painting, that has to be. He has to think about himself, think about something else than he regularly thinks about. I like to paint a lot with the knife, with the palette knife, because I find that it uh, reduces your your middle, your ways of expression, and makes you become more sincere when you paint with something that reduces your ways of expression. If you just paint with a brush, it's somehow easier. You, all, you learn how to paint with a brush, everybody knows how to paint with a brush, but this reduces, or when you paint with a big brush, when you paint with a, you know. You lose precision, but you gain uh, sincerity towards your, impo your first impulse, towards your first gesture when you apply the paint on the canvas, and I guess it's that's what matters, sincerity. You have to be sincere about what you transmit in order to affect and influence people and transmit a certain way of state of mind or way of... Not to, you, you can't tell people what to do, you can't tell them what to think or what to feel, but you have to make them think about s certain things somehow. But right now I live for my paintings. It's not the best way to live, but it's... You can do it if you work a lot and if you accept the fact that it's also a job, it's not just art, art, art. Uh, if you get the portrait commission, you have to do it because you need the money. If you get, uh, I don't know, you can't just pretend. Um, the concept of art for art exists for 100 years or so, maybe more, a bit more, from Monet on. But Manet was very rich, <laughs> yeah. and uh, artists have has have always had uh, this part that before that it's also a job you have to do commissions for wealthy owners for you have to do different things. There are some galleries in Bucharest, but some galleries, uh, and that's Bucharest. Uh, they start to appear more and more galleries, but it's very hard. It's still, um, there is no the job of someone who represents an artist. It, it, it doesn't exist here yet, truly <laughs> how it should be. And it's very hard because you have to also sell your paintings. You, you can't just paint and mind your own business, and someone else takes care of your stuff. I was also shocked. I went in Debrecen. It's a small town in. Hungary and there were like 12 
private galleries and of three or four uh, state galleries who all represented some artists and had curators and everything and uh, it was a small town and I was like okay <laughs> there's a big difference between Romania and Hungary for that for that part here it's uh, very hard to I mean it's not hard to sell it's hard to sell it what it's worth for what it's worth that's the problem the prices are you have to accept the fact that here in Romania there are uh, some salaries, some uh, limitations of salaries, and, and it's you can't have the prices you have in Hungary. Or in, Hungary is not good, uh, not a good example because there it's not so easy either. But in the rest of Europe, I mean, in uh, Western Europe, it's somehow different because um, uh, Romania has been through a lot and it's been 50 years of communism, then 20 years of... I don't know exactly what is going on still. <laughs> and it's not okay, the country is not doing okay, and the uh, government is not really... Like, it's more like a guerrilla government, it doesn't do anything for the people, it just takes care of, of their own little interests. And some Somebody took power after 1990 and that's it. They change roles, Some now it's the opposition that leads, now it's the other one, but there's, they still do the same thing, I mean, they still steal, <laughs> they, don't, they don't do anything. I think it's very important for your own evolution not to overvaluate yourself, because you have to focus on the evolution itself, not on the finished product and what matters most is when you do the painting the moment the process the way you feel the way it makes you feel that's what matters most for me than the painting itself even though the painting itself becomes something else afterwards and becomes something else for other people but for me as a person in a personal way it just becomes something else it becomes a step in what has to be something else